Here is general test practice question. It's a quantitative reasoning sample question from the chapter geometry. It's a more than one answer correct type of question. Test concepts in areas of 2D objects. Let's quickly run through the question. The area for which of the following will necessarily be more than 50 square units indicate all such expressions. So let's say there's an area we want to find out among these six objects given to us for how many of them for which all of them is the area going to be greater than 50. So this is accepted. What all is not accepted? The area is less than 50 certainly not accepted. Even in the cases where the area is equal to 50 that is not accepted. These questions actually are time consuming because what we have to do is we need to compute the area for each one independently. One is a circle, one is a parallelogram, one is a rectangle. You don't have any other choice but to go through them one after the other and check out whether the area is greater than 50. For whichever ones the area is greater than 50, that forms a part of our answer. Let's start with the first one. It's a circle given to us. Circumference of the circle is equal to 22 units. The formula to compute the circumference is 2 pi r. That is equal to 22. Let's take pi to be a 22 by 7 and substitute it here. So step 1, we are going to compute the radius which is 2 times 22 upon 7 times the radius. This is equal to 22 units. Divide both sides by 22. 22 gets cancelled with 22. Cross multiply, we'll find the value of r. r is equal to 7 upon 2. So step 1 done. Step 2, we'll find out the area. Area of a circle is equal to pi r square. Take pi to be a 22 upon 7. 22 upon 7 into the radius which is 7 by 2. So 22 by 7 times 7 by 2 times 7 by 2. This is the area of the circle we are talking about. 7 gets cancelled with 7. 22 gets cancelled with this 2 to leave us with 11 in the numerator. 11 times 7 is a 77. 77 upon 2 is equal to 38.5 square units. Is it greater than 50? Certainly not. So answer option A is not one of the choices for which the area is greater than 50. Quickly summarize it in a printed form. Substituting this value in this 22 by 7 here and finding out the value of r which is equal to 3.5 units. Plugging in the value of r as 3.5 units into the formula to compute the area which is pi r square. Get the area to be 38.5 square units. Choice A is not one of the answers but the area is greater than 50. Second one given to us is the parallelogram whose adjacent sides measure 20 units and 10 units. A parallelogram is a quadrilateral where opposite sides are parallel and opposite sides are equal. So these two sides are going to be the measuring the same. These two will measure the same. Let's assign variables. Let's say this measures B units and this measures A units. What's the area of the parallelogram? Area of the parallelogram is given by the formula AB into sin theta. Product of the two adjacent sides into what is this theta? Theta is the angle between the two adjacent sides. Now do I go with this angle or do I go with this? Let's say this is a theta. This obviously is not theta, this is a different angle, it's quite evident. This is 180 minus theta. Adjacent angles in a parallelogram are supplementary, which means if one is theta, the other is going to be 180 minus theta. Now, which theta do I submit? Do I go with this theta or 180 minus theta? It really doesn't matter because sin theta is equal to sin of 180 minus theta. The answer is going to be the same whether it took theta or 180 minus theta. So in our case, let's say A is equal to 10, B is equal to 20. So the area would end up becoming 10 times 20 times sin theta. That's going to be the area. Now, this is a 200. That's clearly given to us. And then we have a sin theta. What we need to figure out is, when I multiply the sin theta with 200, will the number, will, always, will it always be greater than 50? Or can there be instances where it is less than 50? So what am I going to do? I'm actually going to see, can I pick one such value for this sin theta which will make this 20 times 10 times sin theta to be less than 50. Let's start with what values can theta take. Theta can take values from 0 to 180. It can be, it cannot even be 0, it cannot be 180. It has to be greater than 0, it has to be less than 180. Sin theta is positive in both the first and second quadrant. 0 to 180 covers those two quadrants. Which means what all values can sin theta take? Sin theta therefore consequently will take values which are greater than 0 and can go all the way up to 1 including 1. When will it be a 1? It's going to be a 1 when theta is equal to 90. So it's quite evident that we're talking about numbers like 1 by 2, 1 by 10, 3 by 4. All of these are potential values for sin theta. Let's see if we can pick some value of sin theta which when multiplied with this 200 will bring down the number, the area to be less than 50. 
let's go with sin theta, for example, to be equal to a 0 0.1. Is such a sin theta possible? Yes, it certainly is. You don't even need to know the theta. I'm just giving it to you for information. If theta is equal to 5.73 degrees, you don't need to know this. Keep that in mind. Sin theta will be a 0 0.1. All that you need to know that sin theta can take values from 0 to 1. That's enough for us to say that 0 0.1 is a possible value. If 0 0.1 is a possible value, area becomes 20 times 10 times 0 0.1. I'm plugging in a possible case. So that will take the area to be equal to a 20, which is less than 50. Right. We know that the area is at 200 into sin theta. All that we were interested in establishing is, can I find one such case for sin theta, which when multiplied with this 200, will bring the area, this entire product, to be less than 50. We have found one such instance, which means choice B is not the answer. Because we are trying to find out those cases where necessarily the area will have to be greater than 50. Here it need not necessarily be greater than 50. There are instances where it will be less than 50. Choice B is also not the answer. Summarize it in a printed form. Our idea is to find one instance where the area will be less than 50. Theta takes values which lie between 0 and 180. So sin theta will take values which are from 0 to 1. Cannot include 0 but can include even a 1. I'm picking such a value of sin theta which is equal to 0 0.1. What is the value of theta for that correspondingly? 5.73. This is trivia. You don't need this information. All you need to know is a sin theta of 0 0.1 is a feasible value. That happens. Area is 20 square units. Which means choice B is not the answer. Let's move to the third one. Rhombus whose perimeter is 52 units. A rhombus is a parallelogram where all sides are equal. Its perimeter is 52. All sides are equal. Each side, let's say, measures A units. Then 4 times A is equal to 52. Each side is going to be equal to 13 units. Now, we know the side of the rhombus. Can we find out the area? Area of rhombus is given by one of these two formulae. One is D1, D2 by 2. Where D1 and D2 are the diagonals. We don't have data about the diagonal, so this formula is useless for us. The alternative formula is exactly the formula that we used for parallelogram. Area of a parallelogram was a b sin theta. Here, because all four sides are equal, a will be equal to b, which means it's going to be equal to a square sin theta, where a is the side of the rhombus. So in our example, that would basically translate to 13 square into sin theta. What all values can theta take? Because it's a parallelogram, you can take values which are between 0 and 180. 0 not included, 180 not included. So what all values can sin theta take? Sin theta obviously can take values which are greater than 0 and can go all the way up to 1. It can also be equal to 1. Again, my objective is this is going to be 13 square is a 169. The area for us is equal to 169 sin theta. Can I find such a sin theta which will make this product 169 sin theta to be less than 50? If I can find one such instance, then I can say that this rhombus need not have an area which is greater than 50. I'll still go with the same sin theta of 0 0.1, right? Don't even have to look for anything more. If sin theta is equal to 0 0.1, the area will become 169 times 0 0.1, which is 16.9, which is definitely less than 50. Quickly summarize it in a printed form. Sin theta takes values which are greater than 0, can be less than or equal to 1. I'm picking sin theta is equal to 0 0.1 as we did with choice B. In that case, the area will end up being 16.9, which is less than 50. So choice C, a rhombus whose perimeter is equal to 52, need not have an area which is greater than 50. Choice C is also not the answer. Choice D, rectangle whose perimeter is 50 units. Perimeter of rectangle is 2 times L plus B, where L is the length, B is the breadth. So this is equal to 50. L plus B consequently will become 25. If the sum of the two sides, length and breadth, is equal to 25, will the area necessarily be greater than 50? That's the idea. That's the question we'll have to answer. Area of a rectangle is equal to L into B. There are infinite combinations. Don't just think about integer values. It could be a 24.9 and a 0 0.1. Multiple infinite cases are there. Will we be able to find one case where the area is less than 50? Right. Just go with something like a 24 and a 1. 24 plus 1 is a 25. What becomes the area? 24 times 1, which is 24. Is the area greater than 50? I found one case where it is less than 50. There will be cases where it's going to be greater than 50. For example, if you go with a 10 and a 15, 15 and a 10, that is equal to a 25 to, area will actually be 15 times 10, which is 150. We are not saying that the area cannot be greater than 50. We are finding out whether the area will necessarily be greater than 50, which means we find one instance as we did with the rhombus and the parallelogram where the area is less than 50, then this is not the answer. So L plus B is equal to a 25. You're looking for one instance where the area can be less than, area is less than 50. 
that happens when length equals 24, breadth equals 1, L plus D is a 25, area is equal to 24. So D is also not the answer. Not one of this A, B, C, D has the area necessarily been greater than 50. Let's move on to the fifth one. Square whose perimeter is 32. Square, all four sides are equal. 4A, which is a perimeter, is 32. A is equal to 8. Area of a square is equal to A square, where the small a is a side. So area of this square, therefore, is going to be 8 square. There is no sine theta. There is no variable that comes in other than just the sides. So this is equal to 64. Is this greater than 50? Is this the only value possible if the perimeter of the square is 32? Yes, the only value possible for the area of the square is 64 square units, which is greater than 50. So choice E is one case in the five that you have found till now, where the area is greater than 50. You have one more case. That's a case, it's an interesting one. Right triangle whose hypotenuse is 17 units. Those of us who are familiar, the moment we see 17 as hypotenuse, we'll quickly jump to this 15, 8, 17 Pythagorean triplet. Let's check out whether the area in this case is greater than 50. If it is not, we have just finished the question right away and say that this is not the answer. Let's start with it. These are the two perpendicular sides. So area is going to be equal to 15 times 8 times half cancels out as a 4 to leave us with an area which is greater than 50. 60 is greater than 50. So if it had been a 15, 8, 17, the area is greater than 50. Now we know the hypotenuse is 17. But we do not know whether the other two sides necessarily measure 15 and 8. 15 and 8 are the cases when all three sides are integers. It need not all be integer. The 17 can hold good. These two numbers need not be integers and we can still form right triangles. If we can find one such right triangle whose hypotenuse is 17 and area is less than 50, we can eliminate answer option F also. Let's see if we can do it. What all conditions should that triangle satisfy? Let's say the sides of the triangle are A, B and 17. It's a right triangle. So first step in any triangle, sum of any two sides should be greater than the third side. Hypotenuse is the longer side. So sum of the two smaller sides, A plus B should be greater than 17. That's one condition. The second condition that it has to satisfy is that the hypotenuse is 17. That's the starting point. And third, because it's a right triangle, Pythagoras theorem should be satisfied. Which is A square plus B square should be equal to 17 square, which is 289. I'm going to pick some numbers. I said this need not be integers. So I'm going to have to necessarily look at non-integer values. Let's take a square to be equal to a 285. It's not a. a square is a 285. b square is a 4. Sum of these two is equal to 289. So what is b therefore? b will be, this is the value of b, which is a 2. What is a? 256 is equal to 16 square. 289 equals 17 square. So this number A is somewhere between 16 and 17. Let me just go with something like a 16 for a moment. It's approximately 16, let's say, or approximately 17 you want. Let's go with approximately 16. So will this condition be satisfied? If it's an approximately 16, 16 plus 2 is greater than 17. If it's approximately 17, it will definitely be satisfied. So this condition is satisfied. The Pythagoras theorem is satisfied. So this 285 for a square and b square 4 satisfies the two necessary condition that it's a right triangle from this and it forms sides of a triangle because some of the two smaller sides is greater than the longer side. So both these conditions satisfied. Let's just check out what could its area be. Its area is going to be half into the product of the perpendicular sides which is approximately 16 or approximately 17. Let's check out for both into the other side which is equal to 2. So this will cancel out to leave us with an 8 times 2 which is equal to 16. Had it been a 17, this is going to be approximately 17. In either case, the area is certainly a number which is less than 50. So if it's a right triangle whose hypotenuse is 17, should its area be greater than 50? We have found one case where its area is less than 50. So choice F is also not necessarily the case where it's going to work. It's not the answer. Went to A square as 285, B square as 4. That works out to being an A being 16.88 exactly. You have a calculator, you can figure that out. In that case, does it satisfy the fact that the three sides form sides of a triangle? Yes, A plus B is greater than the longer side. 16.88 plus 2 is greater than 17. Is it forming a right triangle? Yes, obviously we found these two values satisfying the Pythagoras theorem. Now we compute the area for this. The area works out to 16 units or 16.88 units, which is definitely less than 50. So F is also not the answer. So how many instances did the area necessarily end up being greater than 50? Only for the square whose side ended up being 8 units. Choice E is the answer to this question.
Before you leave, I want you to do two things. One, sign up as a trial user for Visaco's online GRE course at online.visaco.com. Takes all of three minutes and two steps to get started. And lastly, subscribe to this channel, youtube.com slash visacogre. We keep adding newer questions, give you tips, tricks on how to crack the GRE.